Listen only mode. Hello. How are you guys doing? Give me a quick shout out. Let me know in the questions tab if you can uh, hear me <laughs> and if you can see uh, Hossein's screen. All right. Jesus, Jacobo, Morovs, Josh, Jason, Nicola, uh, Christoph, Fernand, Ritesh. All right. Great. Dave, Martin. And uh, Massimiliano, how are you? Tom, Gustavo, Allison, and Juan. All right, guys. Okay, for those of you who are new, let me just remind you kind of how this goes. We are, of course, recording, so there will be a replay. There'll be, there'll be something there for you guys. Um, if you need to, if you have questions, post them in the questions or the chat, depending on where you're watching this. Uh, you may or may not see everybody else's comments because we have to moderate them and push them through. So um, chances are you're not going to see everybody's. Hey, Gina. Uh, you're not going to see everybody's stuff. Don't worry. We're here. We see what you're doing. And we, we see the um, comments and the questions and all that stuff. And so we'll answer them as we can. Uh, if you have any questions, you can also just email me at ryan at zbrushworkshops.com. And then in my emails, there's also a phone number. You want to talk about the class? You want to get a sense of how things go? Call the number. It goes into our um, bank of phones. So you'll get one of us. All right. Uh, then I can answer any questions that you have. Now, the other thing to note is that this is uh, basically I have Hossein here and we're going to be talking about his class. His class is at gameartinstitute.com and it is a portrait sculpting class. Pays to register early, so make sure you guys get in there and you get to the class. It has a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's absolutely no risk. I've taken the risk entirely out of the equation for you. The only risk is that you're going to lose out on getting the discounted price because it's uh, cheaper the earlier you get it. Does that make sense? Give me a yes-no that you got that and that that all makes sense to you. Yura is asking about the master circle. The master circle is, is a special thing. I'll actually start talking about that a little bit more this week, but the master circle entitles you to all of the classes at Game Art Institute for 2017. So that includes Adam, it includes Hossein, it includes my anatomy class, it includes Jason Martin, it includes all these guys. Um, email me, I can tell you more about it. All right, um, there's going to be a time for questions, but we're going to start the conversation out um, in general terms. I want to make sure you guys understand uh, a little bit about Hossein's background, where he comes from, and all that stuff. Uh, Ritesh, do past students still get the early bird discount? Um, I'm, if it's there, yeah, you get that discount. Past students, uh, I wouldn't take anything away from you. I would, in fact, give you more. All right, and Uriah. Is how you want me to say it. Absolutely. My apologies. Uriah. Uh, and then we go from there. All right, guys. Um, let's, uh, Nicola, check Game Art Institute because I can't remember when the price goes up. Just go to gameartinstitute.com. It's there on the page. And uh, make sure that you guys uh, are able to check that out. Um, you'll see the price right there, as well as should be a price structure in terms of when it increases. All right, Hossein, thank you. Yeah. I know you're sure. a busy man right now. <laughs> no problem, man. Yeah. Uh, so this was, uh, we got this together kind of at the last minute because Hossein's getting a little crazy busy with all kinds of stuff. Um, the class is really important to him, guys. So make sure that you sign up soon before this kind of fills up. In this class, um, we will most likely not have a session two. So that means session one will, will fill. All right. If you have questions, chat them out. We'll go from there. All right. Uh, what do we want to talk about, Hussein? What are, what's on your mind? Um, uh, I was uh, mostly wanted to get uh, to know, you know, what, uh, you know, uh, what questions are, uh, you know, about the. Sculpting portrait, maybe fiber mesh, uh, and how I do uh, hair, yeah, and uh, beard and stuff like that. And if they have a, a project in mind that they want to see it in 3D, uh, I can open it and they can see it. 
and stuff like that. All right. So let's start getting some questions from you guys. Hossein's saying he's ready to get some questions. So um, while we're getting those questions, Hossein, tell me a little bit about your background for those who don't actually um, know or haven't heard uh, you speak before. Because um, so let's start with where are you located? Uh, sure. I'm, uh, I'm in Istanbul, and I started uh, back in 2007. Yep. It's almost 10 years now. And... Uh, uh, almost six or five years I've been, uh, yeah, six years I've been focused on uh, mostly uh, human faces and human body and uh, mostly organic stuff. But before that, I used to uh, do uh, other environment modeling, I don't know, creating cars and stuff like that. But it has been uh, almost six years that I'm just focused on uh, character creating uh, and sculpting, modeling, uh, texturing, shading, and all that stuff. Yeah. And who do you, uh, are you freelance now? Or are you working uh, for a company or what are you doing now for work? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm working as a freelancer right now. Yeah. And there are a couple of projects uh, I'm working on. Awesome. Uh, how long were you at WWE? Uh, I worked for them uh, a year and a half, uh, and uh, yeah, we did lots of characters. More than I guess, more than forty wrestlers. Yeah, that's yeah, a we were, lot. Yeah, we were three character artists. Okay, so uh, Jesus is asking about your real-time demo. Does that ring a bell? Uh, which one? Which real time? Because I have... So uh, Marmoset. Uh, yeah, I can open Marmoset and... Is that it? They want to see... That's Jesus uh, has asked for that. Ritesh is asking for some information on fiber mesh and going from here. So um, what do you guys need to learn to grow and sculpt your faces. Why don't we, in the uh, in the simplest ways, why don't we take a look at this model? You want to get rid of the texture and start talking about how you approach sculpting a face. What are the things that you think about? How do you go about the process of doing this? Uh, if I want to work on a likeness, uh, for example, uh, sometimes when, when you want to work on likeness, of a celebrity or uh, actors, uh, something like that, yep. you will have uh, lots of, uh, you will get lots of images of the person from different angles, and uh, that can make it uh, kind of easier. But uh, for this one, uh, when, when you only have one image uh, and you want to uh, work based on that, uh, it can be a bit uh, tricky because uh, you don't uh, actually see uh, how uh, he, how the person looks from other angles, and uh, it can be a kind of difficult. But uh, the the thing that I the way I do it is that uh, I try to uh, get the mood uh, and uh, not to go for. 100% likeness in these cases uh, because, uh, for example, here is the reference, and I, I only had this uh, image uh, of him, and I really liked the image, so I wanted to make a 3D portrait based on that. And uh, actually, it will be uh, the case in uh, most of the projects you will get as a game art, the character artist. The concept artist will only uh, give you one view, so you will have to uh, mostly focus on uh, capturing the uh, feeling because you don't know how the person uh, will look exactly from front view or uh, left, so that can be a bit tricky. But uh, for actors or celebrities, it's easier because you will have 
lots of images and uh, there's uh, no, no one particular image that you're after and uh, the way I do it uh, is that I try to capture the likeness in uh, lowest uh, in lower subdivision level uh -huh. uh, when I am sure about the uh, all uh, you know forms then I will move forward and add more subdiv uh, subdivisions so, so that I can work uh, more on you know details and secondary shapes let's take a look at that so can you get rid of everything else just go into solo mode yeah um, so yeah you see uh, y y you'll see that you know the neck and the stuff like that don't look really that good because uh, we, we won't see it when uh, things are uh, you know everything is shown but yeah uh, yeah this is how it looks in solo mode yeah and, and get rid of and this is a subdivision level two so are you working with a base mesh that has topology already or how do you work from your base mesh yeah actually I have a base mesh uh, with uh, topology I don't know why it's not showing the poly polygons wireframe yeah I don't know either. Yeah. Yeah, but um, it's weird. Uh, yeah, I have a base mesh. Uh, actually, I have multiple base meshes because uh, different uh, projects, different clients will give you, uh, mostly will give you their own base mesh. Uh, but this is one of the base meshes I have. It's uh, And I start with, uh, it's kind of dense. Not that much, but uh, yeah, I kind of start with this and try to uh, add one subdivision, then work on the forms, then again add, adding another subdivision and trying to add more details. And uh, I guess uh, I will. F uh, I try to finish my secondary and basic forms in subdivision level four or something like that uh -huh. and after that I will add two uh, subdivisions uh, and I, I will only focus on the details so got it all right great um, and notice you know everything changes without those eyes in there right like that's one of the things that I noticed about your work is the eyes really help sell your stuff. You always texture those eyes. Yeah, yeah. I uh, actually, and most of the time, I uh, paint the eyes in ZBrush. Yeah. In poly paint, and because it's really fun, and uh, yeah, actually, it's uh, tear duct and eyes, and the way I change the shader. You can always change it. You know, to make it the way uh, you want, and uh, he's using the toy plastic, by the way, guys. For those who don't, who missed that, it's really cool. Um, do you? you know, it, yeah, it's really cool um, material, and uh, yeah, I really like that. Do you have the Chris Hemsworth Chris Hemsworth model? Yeah, yeah sure, sure. Maybe we could take a Let look at that. Just and because in this, deleted. yeah, uh, in this class, um, the last time, oh wow, that's kind of awesome. Uh, that would be a cool three D print. Mm. So let me just. So there's a lot of fiber mesh on this, right? Uh, yeah, actually there are, um, yeah, there are, uh, for subtle, for, uh, for, sorry, for stubble, for fuzz, and uh, I have actually multiple 
uh, fiber meshes only for the eyebrows. Yeah. And yeah, because I really like to give variation uh, because uh, you can play uh, with density and uh, stuff like that, and it's easier. And for his uh, eyelashes, I'm using uh, these are not fiber mesh. Okay. These are mesh. Yeah, these are actually. Uh, let me just. Yeah, these are not fiber mesh. These are uh, simple mesh. Insert mesh brush. Yeah, and the reason is that, um, you know, you can do it with fiber mesh, but uh, I guess you have more control when using uh, insert mesh uh, for eyelashes. Yeah. But it it takes a lot of time. It takes uh, really a long time. So most of the time I do eyelashes with fiber mesh. But in this case, I did it. Uh, I spent some time and did it with uh, insert mesh. Okay. And, and yeah, again for the hair, uh, this is fiber mesh, but the front of the hair is mesh. You see, is this part is mesh? That's the insert mesh. Yeah, that's. Uh, and then what's but just the, the fiber rest, mesh? What's can I see just the fiber mesh? Yeah, let me. Yeah, this is the fiber mesh. So how are you getting these spikes and this movement in the fiber mesh? Uh, the the way I do it is that I usually uh, mask. For example, let's uh, max. Uh, mask the part I want, and yeah. then I will use uh, two brushes. One is groom uh, spike to just get this part, and the other one, which is really handy, is pinch brush. Ah, and yeah, that's quite easy. Yeah, you'll get, um, and. Yeah, because uh, I've seen lots of uh, tutorials, but I haven't seen people using pinch brush for fiber mesh. Yeah. I just gave it a shot, and I find it really uh, useful. It yeah. actually works better than groom spike, because groom spike is supposed to do the same thing, but uh, pinch brush works better for me. That's great. That's great. So you use groom spike to pull that out. Then you use the pinch brush to just like gel it together. Yeah. And then on top of that, you have a layer, multiple layers, um, but you have a layer where you go in and you add the insert mesh to just really give it those, that sp specific quality. Because would you say fiber mesh is, it's like a little hard to control, right? Yeah, actually, uh, I used uh, to do all the hairs uh, with, uh, you know, fiber mesh and yeah. I never used uh, insert mesh before uh, but uh, when I was working on um, my homeless I wanted this uh, you know let me just find it uh, you see these uh, beard uh, yep. hairs that are kind of uh, you know round I, I couldn't get it with fiber mesh, and uh, yeah, these these ones you see, uh, it was really difficult to get it with fiber mesh, and it was the first time I used uh, insert mesh uh, using mesh instead of fiber mesh, and I really huh. liked it, and it gave me more control, and uh, I um, uh, even uh, Took it for and on the hair, all oh, and he even here, the hair is. Uh, this is the fiber mesh. Yeah. But we have mesh, too. Oh, this that's, is the mesh. Yeah, no, that's yeah, great. 
Yeah, and uh, it it really uh, gave the uh, feeling I wanted, I was looking for, and I did it again here for uh, Chris. Now, of course, uh, if you hide it, you know, and if you see it like this, uh, it will be cool too, but this one uh, makes it even better. Yeah, I agree. That adds that next level. Because fiber mesh is great, and you can do a lot of stuff, especially layering it, but one of the issues it has is really just that really manicured quality that's that's kind of in the front. So it'll do great for the body of the hair, but when you have to have that spike right along the hair line, that's stuff I've always had problems with. So that's really cool. So is the eyebrows, yeah. are those um, fiber mesh too? Yeah, eyebrows are... Or fiber mesh. Uh, the thing with fiber mesh is that when you want to have some, you know, single hairs that, uh, you know, each one has its own, uh, you know, feeling, it's really difficult to do it with fiber mesh. So uh, you can uh, combine fiber mesh with mesh and get a really good result. For the eyebrows, again, uh, you see, it's fiber mesh, but these are, you know, you see some? Oh, yeah. These are mesh, but this is fiber mesh. That's fiber mesh, and then there's little tiny pieces of the hair that are insert. Yeah, yeah. All right, hold on but one this So fiber. fiber mesh, and then show me the insert. Really small. Yeah, can you guys see that? Give me a quick shout out and let me know if you can see that because sometimes the streaming doesn't um, capture or put everything through because it's like five frames a second. Do you see the difference between that? He's going back and forth right now. All right, cool. So um, it's really subtle too, right, guys? Like, and, and I'm soliciting your opinion here because I'm wanting to get a sense of things from you, but it's a real subtle thing. And how important do you think that that is to Hossein's final image? It's what? It, I mean, it's like, I don't know, maybe 200 polygons, yeah, actually, 100 polygons, yeah, but... Yeah, you can, uh, you can, you know, this one will look really good without uh, insert mesh if you don't have time to, because it takes really uh, a lot of time inserting single hairs and playing with that, with that. But if you do it, it's, it's going to make, make it even better, looking even better, you know. Yeah, cool. All right, that's great. So now, um, fiber mesh is an important part, and you covered that in your class. You covered it in your last class too, but um, I'm assuming we'll go into more depth here. So you did it with Scarlett uh, Johansson, correct? Yeah, yeah, I uh, covered uh, fiber mesh there too. Okay, great. Um, and th there's a lot of fiber mesh on this guy, so multiple parts to it. But um, if you can, do you have any history on this guy's face? Like, basically what I'm trying to, what I want to make sure everybody understands is like a little bit of how you go, how you start, because a lot of people here are going to be starting, and um, and I've seen people uh, grow in Hossein's class, so I've seen them grow and really advance. But um, if we can get a little sense of like how you might progress, uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. Let me. Let's see. Yeah, I think I do have it here. And yeah, these are some progress shots. Okay, great. So this is the my first progress shot. Yeah. And this is the texture. I was playing with texture. So this is uh, yeah, this is my second progress. Yeah. And first, the hair was really simple, but it was changed, and yeah, but. I guess these are only, I will have these. 
Yeah, this is the first I have. Great. So when you're first yeah, I starting... Used the, the same... Yeah? Yeah, I used the same base mesh uh, as I had for homeless guy because I really liked the topology and yeah. stuff like that. Do you just um, do you start over with the basic version of that or do you just take like the homeless guy's face and then just start sculpting on top of that? Uh, no, actually, I start with uh, uh, base base mesh, something like this. Do you have a? Do you, can you show these guys that base mesh? The simple, the very, the one you start with. Uh, do you have that on there? I don't. I don't know where. where it's fine if you can't is. find it. But if you can, it would it might help people get a sense of that. It's the best. It's the same base mesh I used for George Clooney. Yeah, yeah. There we this go. Is, is... Okay, so uh, just just work with me here for a second. I and and, and I know um, a lot of this stuff you just kind of like because I've watched you in your class in like an hour. It was Scarlett Johansson. It was just amazing. Um, but if we go back to that base mesh, um, what are some of the first things that you start to look for and establish? If we're talking about pure anatomy. And uh, and I understand you're really uh, intuitive in in how you do this. So it's not I'm not asking for the anatomy words, but what do you really start to focus on? What are the first things? Do you focus on a jaw? Do you focus on the eyes? Do you focus on the forehead? Like what do you kind of nail first? Um, actually, uh, the first thing that I uh, uh, focus on is the overall shape of the head and the uh, the way it's connected to the neck, uh, to the body with neck and things like that. Yeah. And if I want to some because uh, there are times that you do it with fiber uh, with dyna mesh, and there are times that you have the base mesh and uh, you want to work on top of it. I guess this is the case uh, in lots of projects now uh, that you get the base mesh. So first thing that I try to do is to refine the base mesh, the basic forms, and the shape of the skull. So that's like the overall silhouette from a front and a side view, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you'll go in and you'll start to place like the where the eyes are. Because I think I saw you go in there and you do work features a bit, right? Uh, yeah, uh, I will first uh, refine the the, uh, the overall uh, shapes. Yeah. And then I will add a, at a subdivision level, something like this, uh -huh. so that I have more polygons and I will go and uh, start, you know, sculpting. Uh, it's, it was a bit intense, but... Uh, something like this and uh, for this stage if I am uh, doing likeness I'll definitely take a look at the uh, references I have but uh, if it's not uh, likeness I will uh, just you know try to make it look good as a you know human yeah I'm letting him work here real quick, guys, um, just so that you can get a sense of some of the things that he thinks about. So you saw he's establishing the cheek. He established the jawline. He's establishing the separation from the cheek to the mouth, the muzzle of the mouth. You know, these are all the things that really start to establish character. And one of the really great um, things about this class is just going to be having you walk through and find what is it that really does establish character because a lot of us get focused on following reference and following it step by step but Hossein if I was to ask you do you use um, ZBrush's see-through a lot or do you how do you use reference uh, I use uh, uh, what was the name 
uh, this, you know, uh, spotlight. Was yeah. it spotlight? Yeah, spotlight yeah, texture. I, uh, yeah, I uh, bring references and I use see through. Like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. These are the two ways, especially when I'm working on the likeness. Uh -huh. I'll use it a lot. And uh, it's really, uh, it, it comes really handy because you can easily see where you will need to move your model. So it's uh, see through and spotlight. And uh, yeah, and, uh, that helps a lot for the likeness, especially the likeness. Yeah. The movements, too, are not very big right now, guys. So uh, you have to ex excuse me. I, like I'm, um, I'm letting, I'm wanting Hossein to kind of go through and just kind of do some of his magic, so you guys can kind of see this, so we can start to unpack some of this. But uh, going in there, establishing some anatomy, establishing some form. Um, look at the the way in which he goes in and establishes, you know, these um, these features these elements, which are really important. And then you can go in and move things around to make them fit and work. There is anatomy that you have to learn. And how important, Hossein, do you think anatomy is for people um, as they're getting into this? Uh, I guess uh, the most important thing that they need to you know, everyone who is uh, going to focus on character sculpting is uh, knowing uh, muscles, uh, you know, with skin, you know, they don't have to know each, all the muscles, uh, how they look with, without skin, and uh, because it can be kind of uh, frustrating and difficult uh, to uh, memorize all these really uh, small uh, details, but if they, uh, you know, focus on how muscles look uh, when skin is on, it can be easier for them to memorize the shapes. They, they know that, uh, for example, here is this shape, here is that shape, and they, they can uh, focus on that uh, more uh, easily, I think. Yeah. Yeah, at least that, that works for me. Because, so, thinking about the muscle, but not just the muscle or the bone, but how these things work in once you get to the skin. So morphology, the actual study of, of how the surface comes together. Yeah, because at the end of the day, uh, this is what uh, people will see, and this is the, uh, the final product that, uh, is important. It's uh, human with skin and uh, all that stuff. And uh, actually, it can help if uh, they want to focus more on the muscles and stuff like that. They can sculpt a skinny person. Uh, that that uh, that way they can also uh, they can both see uh, muscles and uh, bones. And uh, it can be a really good practice uh, if they want to, you know, focus on knowing how muscles and uh, skeleton are shaped beneath uh, skin. Got it. And are, you're using the standard brush right now. Is there any special settings that you have for it? No, it's uh, uh, the basic setting. And everything is, yeah. Now, uh, Gustavo's asking how long it takes to do a full face. Um, and I should keep in, I should make sure that people understand that, you know, especially when you're sculpting faces and whatnot, you know, they're, they're an evolving process and there's always little details and things that can change. So the real part of this question is, you know, how long it takes you to get like a, um, 
a feasible version of the face, something that you could kind of lock or rest on. So, Hossein, how long does it take for you to kind of get, you know, to a point where you're comfortable on the face? Um, well, uh, like, like you said, it's uh, different uh, because for likeness, it definitely is going to take um, a, a longer time uh, because uh, as uh, you both need to focus on anatomy and the likeness of the person. But if I'm not uh, really focused on uh, likeness, um, I don't know, I, I guess I can get a good looking head in hours if I'm not really uh, looking for a likeness. Yeah, I guess um, something that uh, not something that has you know lots of details. Yeah. Something that looks uh, it has uh, good basic forms. It has uh, good secondary forms. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what's your uh, perspective setting at right now? By the way. Do you change that often, or do you leave it at the default 90? Uh, I guess now it's 50, but okay. yeah, I usually change it to 30. Okay. Just, and yeah. 30, for everybody who knows, is like, uh, I think it's equivalent to either a 50 or an 85. I can't remember which one. But much better for the face, because the default perspective in ZBrush is really designed for like an entire body. So it's a totally different perspective distortion. All right, how are you guys doing on questions? Keep them coming. I know there are some questions about um, settings and systems and st uh, like go to webinar and things like that that I'm I'm kind of skipping over. You can email me that stuff. Um, but if you've got questions about what Hossein is doing, then please let me know. Uh, so we've answered Gustavo your question, Mohammed. Um, not all the sculpting happens with the standard brush, uh, but that's what he's using right now. So we answered that. Uh, Fernando base mesh. This is he started with the base mesh. All right, and uh, Jesus or yeah, Jesus is asking, do you have any standard size for the eyes? And so he does have a base mesh here. But what do you do in terms of the eyes and measurement? I was saying, do you have any? Do you just have it included in your base mesh or? Uh, uh, for no, I actually just uh, work on it and change the size and uh, as needed see if that fits. yeah yeah and um, yeah. yeah not nothing special there yeah now I do know some artists that will actually use the physical measurements like for example the eye is I think 24 millimeters um, wide yeah, or yeah. in diameter I think yeah uh, I don't uh, I don't use them actually okay yeah, and it's not necessary. It's it's just some people will do that, and I found that that's useful for some people in the, when they're beginning. Is just get some real life measurements. Head is nine point five um, inches. You know, the eyeballs, the human eyes, do not vary between humans more than two millimeters. I think once they're adults, so they we're all like twenty five millimeters, if I remember right. But the thing that you'll see from Hussein is, you know, this is only just one part of the equation. Uh, so the goal is for you to get in when you're in this class and be picking up on the little things that he's doing. He's not worrying about the exact measurements of the eyes. Uh, he's really focused on getting that feeling um, of it first. Is, would you say that's accurate, Hussein, or no? Um, yeah, actually, uh, I mostly focus on the uh, feeling, and because I use see-through and... Uh, you know, spotlight. I can yeah. check my eye socket with the reference and uh, make sure that, you know, for example, the eyes size are you know looking good. Cool. 
cool. Uh, Chess Love's asking when you break symmetry. Is that something you do right at the end, halfway through? Uh, I actually do it uh, at the end. Uh, not at the end, but uh, you know, when I have enough details, when I have uh, added uh, you know alphas, because if I break it soon, I will have to uh, add small skin details twice, and uh, yeah, but not at the beginning, but uh, when I have all the forms, and uh, yeah, all then right. I break it. And then Christian was asking about alphas and skin texture and stuff like that. And do you ever use texturing XYZ or those guys, or would, how do you get some of that detailing? Yeah, I actually uh, have used it uh, recently for for a project that uh, uh, I I can't share it yet. But yeah. I just gave it a shot because uh, the client asked me to uh, use it, and uh, I really liked it because uh, it it you know saves a lot of time. You don't have to add all those alphas uh, that take time. And things like that, but uh, when when using uh, displacement maps, it's really important to uh, make sure that you don't uh, depend on a displacement map 100%. You're just using that because in most cases that I see is that people are de depending on those maps a lot, so they don't spend uh, that much time on secondary shapes on basic forms and they think that that map is going to cover it but uh, if you use it only as detail pass and you do all those uh, secondary forms all those uh, you know details before uh, adding uh, uh, alpha and skin detail and just use that for uh, skin detail that that's really uh, a cool thing to use Cool. All right. Uh, Jarek's got a great question. Um, he's asking, was there, what was the biggest breakthrough while learning, the game-changing observation that made heads just so much better for you? Um, I guess uh, for me it was a project that um, helped me a lot. I guess it was a WWE project. Yeah. It really helped me a lot. It uh, pushed things forward because uh, there were so many characters I was responsible uh, of sculpting. And the cool thing about it uh, was that uh, they were all likeness studies. And the cool thing about likeness studies is that uh, when you do it, you, you have to sculpt uh, different facial forms, different body forms, and that, uh, that helped. Uh, helps you to have a, a kind of um, you know everything goes to your mind because you know that you have uh, sculpted this kind of jaws before this kind of nose before and uh, it, it really helps you later on when you want to create a character uh, uh, you know all by yourself without looking at any detail uh, you can do it because you have a mind that uh, is full of different shapes and so I guess uh, WWE project was uh, was really help uh, helpful for me yeah. and uh, yeah, it helped me a lot and uh, it was a really cool project and uh, I learned a lot both uh, for face and um, for body and uh, it was really cool great uh, Gustavo, or actually, let's start with Massimiliano. Uh, Massimiliano is asking, um, do you do any previous study, like drawing or tracing, before you start sculpt, or you just jump in for sculpting? Uh, you mean right now, or from the beginning? When you, when you start learning? a new project, right now, today, uh, when you start projects today. Uh, well, yeah, I only uh, work on sculpting uh, if I want to 
start a project these days, but I used to uh, draw a lot uh, years ago. Uh, before I start the project, uh, I used to do a drawing and make sure that everything's going to look uh, good. But uh, but these days, I mostly do it with uh, sculpting, even when I want to have a uh, to do a sketch, I do it uh, using dy uh, Dynamesh or uh, things like that. And yeah. yeah, but I really like drawing too. But um, um, it's it has been a long time, maybe two or three years that I haven't uh, drawn drawn things. Cool. All right, a couple more questions. We've got about 10 more minutes, guys. Oh, what happened? Did we lose? Oh, there we go. Uh, Gustavo was asking about when you start to do expressions and posing. Uh, when I have a... Oh, let me... When I have a... Um, uh, uh, final project something like this uh, I will start uh, adding the pose the expression using uh, transpose mass yeah and uh, first uh, I will do really basic uh, pose with it then I will uh, get back to the sculpt and work more on the expression Cool. All right, and uh, Jesus is asking, uh, what's the most important part of a face to make it look appealing and capturing a likeness? Um, what's the most important? Um, actually, I would say... Um, you know the eyes, but then, uh, you know, maybe uh, before I would say the eyes, but right now I, I will say everything. When you are doing the likeness, uh, it's really important to focus on the lips, on nose, on overall um, shape of the head. And a really cool thing that I have been focused on for the last two or three years is that I've tried to capture the likeness uh, from all the angles, uh, but you know, maybe three years ago, I was mostly focused on uh, front view and uh, not giving uh, too much attention, paying too much attention to other angles. But uh, these days, I try to uh, gather as many references as I can so that. Uh, my likeness projects look uh, like the person from different angles uh, because that's really important because these heads are uh, going to be used um, on production and it's important that uh, it looks like the same person from uh, all the angles. I even try to make the hair ha haircut looking the same from all the angles. Mm -hmm. So uh, these days I focus on everything when I, when, it, when it comes to uh, likeness, and these are the most uh, time-consuming projects uh, too. But I really enjoy it. Great. Uh, Gustavo, there's no HD geometry being used. You don't use HD geometry, do you, Jose? No, no. It's, it's uh, actually this one has. Uh, let me check. Uh, it's so weird to see them without the eyes. I think it's a really important thing for people to understand. You know, um, you've got to have all the pieces, like the hair, the eyes, in there when you start doing this likeness, because you know, you could just gotta have yeah, that. Yeah, it's 
It's almost uh, 5 million, so it's not that uh, polygon heavy. Yeah. There you go. And that those pores, was that XYZ, texture XYZ, or were those um, alphas um, that you got somewhere else? No, these are alphas. Uh, but I've used the uh, XYZ in a recent project, which I can't uh, share. Yeah. No. All right, so let's talk. Let's unpack this a little bit. I've got a couple more questions to ask here, but we only got a few minutes. Um, a few more minutes of Hossein's time. It's actually quite late where he is. Uh, the class, you guys head over to gameartinstitute.com. It's already over there. Lotum, um, congrats, man, for signing up. And it uh, looks like, yep, yeah, Eric signed up just earlier. So, and Joe Lee signed up. Congrats, man. And Brody Perkins, welcome. So make sure you guys um, signed up over here, uh, Uriah. It looks like you're in the master circle, but I think you sent me an email, so I'll check that. And uh, Andrew Faithful is in there as well for the uh, for the portrait class. So these are all people that have signed up um, for this thing. Brian Spencer, Halim, looks like you're in here and you're in there. Congrats, man. Uh, and, uh, all right. So the way this is going to work, we're going to meet, I think on a, a Saturday or a Sunday, Hossein, what did you end up saying? Uh, it was on Sunday. Okay. You wanted Sunday and I think it was on the fifth. It's going to work at 10. It's a little different than how this webinar works. A webinar usually has hundreds of people in it. Um, for example, we could have a thousand people sign up for a webinar and then we get, you know, maybe half that or whatnot to show up for the live one. So everybody's muted here. In a live class, you're in a go-to meeting. You, it is, you unmute yourself, you talk. There's much more flexibility and freedom. So you're actually talking with Hossein. Hossein is usually working and doing the, the work that he wants you to do. So your job is to be asking questions and watching and picking out what you can and, uh, and learning as much as you can. Uh, so that's going to happen 10 a.m., California time uh, on a Sunday, and uh, March 5th is the start date. If you sign up today, you are going to save money, so make sure you sign up today. You get in because we already had one price hike, and I don't want you guys to miss this next price hike. Um, I want you guys to get in. Uh, it pays to register early, and there's a 30-day money-back guarantee, so uh, if you've got it, if this is something you want to do, then I, there's no reason to wait. It just hurts you in the end to wait. All right. So make sure you guys sign up today. If you have any questions, you email me. Uh, Hossein, let's talk a little bit about what we're going to do in the class. Um, so the first week or two, what is going to be their primary focus in a class with you? Uh, I actually uh, had uh, something in mind. Uh, I wanted to start uh, working on a likeness portrait, but... Uh, uh, but we can, you know, there, there are two options. We can uh, do something like this homeless guy. Uh, I mean, I, I can um, just uh, do a project based on single uh, image. Yeah. Uh, I really like uh, some images that I have in mind. Or we can do a... Uh, actor likeness uh, head pr uh, portrait. Yeah. Uh, I don't know which one is going to be more interesting. Um, so, what for the last class? Yeah. We did, we did uh, Scarlett Johnson, and I don't know. What, what do you think? Is it. Um, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? What were the options again? We can, um, you know, this one is going to be more challenging, something, making something like this homeless guy, you know, trying to make a 3D model based uh, only on one photograph. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, that's going to be more challenging, uh, but if we can, um, you know, do something that is easier and making someone famous uh, that... We have lots of images of, and we can focus on sculpting the likeness. 
Yeah, and I'm sure probably you can give people a choice too. So celebrities um, is going to look good on a demo reel. There's no question about that. Um, so those are always positive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. So um, let me see. What else do we need to cover? Ah, some questions here about how long. So Gustavo, it's a 10-week course, or did we say eight-week? I have so many different ones that sometimes I forget. Uh, I think we said eight weeks. Yeah, it was eight weeks. Yeah. Eight weeks. Yes, it is. All right, guys. So it's eight weeks long. That's how long we're going to go. And uh, there's a couple of things that can happen from here. So, of course, I want you guys to make sure you sign up, you register, you get into the course if this is something that you're going to do. If you're still on the fence and you're unsure, I'm going to send you a couple of more things via email. I'm going to send you a couple more things in terms of Hossein's process. So I'll send you some examples of some of the things that he's done in the past um, with students and how he operates. So you'll get to see that if you're still on the fence. Um, you'll get to see that. Those are all included. So if you're, um, if you're joining this, there's going to be extra bonuses that get handed in there. So uh, if you sign up, you'll get to see all of that stuff and you'll get to keep access to things like the fiber mesh thing that we're going to share um, and maybe the first class that we're going to share as well. Uh, so I've got more stuff coming your way. Uh, in the meantime, if you have questions, you can always email me. I can always get them from Hossein and send them back to you. Uh, we've got two or three more questions I want to answer right now. Uh, Juan is saying, wish you could afford them. Yeah, well, that's why one, there's the master circle, um, which gives you all of them. So hopefully I'll send some more information out about that for you. Uh, Michael uh, is asking, when do you set up UVs in order to use XYZ? Or do you set up UVs, let's say? Uh, yeah, uh, if you want to... Actually, the, the base mesh I was using, yep. it has a UV. Uh, when you change stuff, you will have to uh, modify the UV. Yeah. And yes... You are going to use uh, XYZ uh, maps. You will have to um, have UV on, on the model. I guess we can. Yeah, and to do texture check. nowadays. Yeah, this is the UV. Cool. All right. Well, I think that's going to about wrap it up for us, guys. I'm going to get you um, – I'll answer your emails as they come. Make sure you sign up for the class. And uh, thanks, Hossein, for showing us the process and kind of starting that sculpt and walking through that. So we're going to be – people will have a choice. There's going to be a celebrity. We're going to focus on the skeleton, anatomy of the face. You're going to focus on skin like you were saying, right? Yeah, yeah. And then uh, show them how to get that texturing in the wrinkles, which I know there were some questions about how to get those wrinkles. And uh, it's a process. It's, it's something that takes like a couple of hours to explain. And then watch you, when you see Hossein go through the process, then you'll be able to start to get into the flow because it's totally a flow state. There's, there's like not really um, – you can do things obvious. You can do things wrong. But once you get into the flow of pores – uh, you get really good results. It's it's not about accuracy. It's about making it feel and look right. Am I wrong there? Yeah, absolutely. That's that's right. Yeah. All right, guys. Email me if you have questions. Um, again, this is at gameartinstitute.com, this class. Make sure you guys sign up early so you do not miss out on the discount. And uh, if you've got any questions, email me and we'll go from there. I'll talk to you later. Thanks, Jose. Sure thing. Thanks, guys. All right. See ya. See ya. Bye.